Welcome to The Luxury Code, where we decode the mindset, the marketing, and the business approach of successful luxury brokers. Hey, welcome back to The Luxury Code, where we are unpacking the code from luxury rock star agents on how they build their business and what they're doing to innovate. Joy Matelios, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. So give people some context. Fairfield County, yep. where does that, where do you cover? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in Greenwich, Connecticut. And, uh, but we also ca cover Darien, New Canaan, all of Fairfield County. Yes. Yeah. And for context for our listeners, how long have we worked together now? Oh, it's been about five years. About five years. So yeah. in five years, for people that are curious, your average sales price is just shy of $3 million. So yes. you did 193 million in sales last year? Yes. Are you yeah. happy? It would have been better if we went over 200. Did, but you, <laughs> did you just like think I should just buy like two houses at the end just, just to get to 200 million? Yeah, yeah. So, so we want to unpack. In the last five years, your business has grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. You, you really, like everything about your energy speaks to luxury. So, so my first question for you is: If somebody is thinking fancy cars, big expensive houses, six-figure commission checks, it looks like it's so fabulous. I watch Million Dollar Listing. If they can do it, I can do it. Right. More people fail on the high end than they do in the low, the low price points. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the three most important first moves somebody needs to make to be successful on the high end? Yeah, so I think a lot of it has to do with mindset, first of all, right? And don't, don't think I'm crazy for saying this, but the, but the first thing that everyone should know is everyone poops. Right? Yeah. Everyone is human. You heard your first, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. By the way, that is the moment on Instagram that I want. Everyone uh, poops. Everyone poops. What do, what do you mean? Yeah, so it, it's interesting because y you just have to realize that nobody's larger than life, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my first luxury clients, I was in Manhattan because that's where I started my career. Yep. We're in the back of a limo, and I'm with I'm with a movie star. Okay, she's a real movie star, and she turns to me and she goes, "I have to take a dump." And I was like, I was like, okay, we need to go see this other apartment. She's like, no, I, I was like, I'm sure there's a lot of bathrooms there. And she's like, no, 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 I need to go in my bathroom and I need to use my Toto bidet. Oh. So I was like, okay, told okay. the driver to go back to her yep. apartment. Yep. And we had a whole discussion about Toto bidets and how yes. I love it too. And, yes. and it, so the bottom line is everyone's human. Don't forget that, right? Okay, I was wondering where you were going. So the <laughs> distinction is everybody puts on their pants the same way. Everybody yes. poops. Everybody's human. Don't be intimidated. That's the point. Yes. But but Joy, it's so easy to be intimidated. I mean, I'm not worth this much. I don't have the star power they have. I don't have all the things that they have. Yeah. How, how do I not be intimidated? Well, the thing is you don't have to be as rich as them mm -hmm. to give them a rich experience, right? Tell me more about that. Yeah, so it's all about your knowledge. You have to provide massive value to mm -hmm. them. And, and the luxury client wants to make sure that you know everything else. They, they want to know that you know where the off-market listings are, right? right? Um, that you know what else is sold if it's a seller mm -hmm. and, and what the story was behind that, yes. right? And who bought it. Yes. Um, so it's, it's more about your knowledge. And, and it's also about knowing like which houses have a squash court or right. a full court basketball right. or, or knowing the difference between Thassos Marble and Calcutta Gold like, mm -hmm. uh, or knowing about geothermal energy, you know? Yes. So these are all things that you have to know. Um, so it's really being a, a source and an, an advisor versus yes. just being a sales agent. So we can spend a lot of time unpacking that. So if someone was listening right now, and by the way, every luxury agent I talk to says the same thing. Hey, we may mm -hmm. not have the same value in terms of our net worth, but I know my real estate market better than anybody else. And that's right. where they're, that's their cachet. That's their energy. Yeah. So what do you do or what do you recommend others do to get to know the local market at that level? Like how much time are you spending studying it, talking to other brokers, talking to other agents? What do you do? Yeah, so, I mean, it's years of experience, right? Yep. So it's it's knowing the market, it's knowing the other agents, it's, yeah, it's knowing the local architects, the local builders, mm -hmm. um, and really understanding that. And and I think the other part of that- that's also tribal knowledge, you know what I mean? Like somebody knows that, but there's no like, Here's the luxury guide to selling in Darien. Like, you know, like that yeah. just doesn't exist. No, there, there is no guide. No. Yeah. So, yeah. But, so how do I, if I'm coming in and I'm new, and a lot of people that are listening to the show are veteran veterans like you, and they're looking for the same little yeah. nuggets and hacks. And we're going to talk marketing and all that stuff in a minute. But, you know, for the person that may be listening that's like, oh, I'm like a couple years in and I'm just having a hard time getting any traction. Mm -hmm. So 
are you studying the MLS every day? Are you reaching out to other brokers and saying, Absolutely. what do you got in terms of pocket listings? Like unpack some of that. Yeah. So I, I, well, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I've established a reputation, right? Yes. So other brokers, yes, will give me their off market listings. They know yeah. that I have these celebrity buyers, so they're willing to give their, their open book of what's yes. not on the market yet. Yes. Um, but a lot of it is, is just really just talking to everyone, anyone mm-hmm. that you can to find out what's coming up and what's going on, right. who's, who's living where. Um, and then it's really just being authentic, you yeah. know? We hear that word a lot. What does that mean? Yeah, so it, it you know, anyone in luxury can, can sense if you're being fake, right? Yeah. And, and so I, I don't know what it is about me, but I, I feel like because I'm so authentic with other people that yeah. I kind of lay it out like this is who I am, right? Yeah. I'm not saying that you should dress like a, you know, homeless person, but <laughs> you, you should dress nice to, to yes. be in luxury. Yes. But but be yourself, and and I, I you know anyone that's in luxury has achieved a level of success, and I yes. love hearing their story, right? right? And when you communicate with them and you go to that level, you're mm-hmm. able to really have a deep connection. And I feel like all my clients like tell me like sometimes TMI, but a lot right. of information because yeah, they feel, like I got a poop. <laughs> Because, because are you going to tell us who that was? By the way, you heard it here first. This oh is now, gosh, now, I'll, I'll tell you show, Now it's TMZ. <laughs> Um, but it's it's you know you you have to be their trusted advisor and yeah. and and with authenticity and if you're genuine then people feel like they can trust you. Okay, so let's talk about the thing I know you also do, which is sweat equity, and you work and you done. I mean, you know, you've done a lot in the mm-hmm. last five years, but you've done a ton in the last ten. Talk about before we go into marketing. Let's mm-hmm. just talk about being gritty. Yeah. Because, I mean, you you are so lovely. Your energy oh. is so... And then I know you can put in 12 to 14 hour days. I do. And I think it's it's part of my upbringing, right? It's like that Asian Korean, like, yes. uh, like mother. Yes. So like everything that I do, and she's always said, like, if you become a garbage man, I want you to be the best garbage man, right? right? So, right. Uh, so I have this in my head that I always am trying to be number one and always trying to do my best. Yes. At the same time, I've learned that sometimes I have to pivot. And mm-hmm. and so I think that's kind of, if something doesn't go right, then I, I don't dwell on it. Right. I easily pivot. I'm like, okay, what can we do next? Yeah. Well, you, you teed know? me up perfectly for, and I had a feeling like for a lot of us, it's our parents, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's it's a mentor or it's something that you're just not working hard enough, kid, right? <laughs> like, you know, you could do a little more. Um, so good message for all of us. Why don't you actually tell the camera right there that they can do a lot more? Oh, you can do a lot more. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Good little coaching moment. So, so you mentioned pivot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, here we are, you know, two years into the pandemic, many will say, you know, we're nearing the end, you know, thank goodness with vaccines and everything else. How did your marketing pivot or change or did it starting out in, you know, March of 2020? And yeah. let's unpack some of the things you're doing that worked and what didn't work. So, I mean, we listened to you <laughs> and we doubled down on video, but yes. we were already doing it. Yes. So when COVID happened and everyone's like, oh my God, you know, we, we would, call other brokers and be like, you know, I have a client that wants to get into your listing. Do you have a virtual tour? And they'd be like, no, I didn't do one. And I'm like, oh my Uh, God, you know, but anyone that called us, yeah, for sure. We had one and we were able to do that. We were able to do a lot of Zoom buyer consultations. Um, We just really use technology Mm -hmm. Um, and it was easy for us because we were doing it already, you know. Zoom was a blessing in 2017 when I'm like, all coaching clients were doing, other people were like, what? And then they were like, Oh, this was really a good idea. Yeah. You were prepared. But but so beyond, you know, video and video tours, if I was in your database or I was in your farm or I'm in your, you know, your main areas where you serve, mm-hmm. what am I seeing? What am I getting? What's the frequency? Is it direct mail? Is it email? Is it video? Is it are you doing geofencing? Like yeah. talk to us tactically about what marketing works. So we do it all. Um, and we've doubled down on geographic farm, which has helped with our listings, yes. right? So, um, and I heard someone on a, on a previous podcast say that they don't really do direct mail to luxury. Right. And and I, cause they were like, cause the luxury client doesn't open up the mail, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is fine, right? Sure. But I've had um, people open up my direct mail and it's the office manager of, or the family office manager mm-hmm. who opens it up and they're like, God, your marketing is amazing. Can you come right. meet with my boss? Yes. And we'd like to list the house, one of seven houses, right? right. So um, it does work. So yes. I'm always of the mindset that you should never discount any any type yeah. of marketing. Um, and, you know, so we're seeing a lot of millennial buyers mm-hmm. come in, and mm-hmm. they're a completely different mindset, right? Sure. 
And so they just don't want to read anything, just want to press a button and-, and Get magic. And, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> and watch a video. Yeah. So we definitely use a lot of video, yeah. uh, but we also do use the hardcover, like coffee table book sure. for the luxury client mm-hmm. who's older, who's just like, this is what they want. They want it mailed to them. Yes. They want to, you know. So it, it's kind of, we, we hit upon all of it. So I yeah. love that it's a non-myopic approach. You're, you're touching multiple senses. You're If somebody is of a certain age, you're like, let's send them the physical, I'm like the listing presentation book yeah right it's like here's everything we do versus someone else is like just send me the video and I can watch it yeah well everyone speaks a different language right, right. so that's right. another thing like yes. to do it in metric versus you know the yes you know, yes square feet they're like no how many meters is that or you know and you have to know yeah because if you don't know they're like hmm right, right? so so video mm-hmm. uh, if I went to your YouTube channel is that the main source is it Instagram is that the main source is it Facebook is it all the above it's all the above okay. um, I will say with luxury we definitely I you know my career really pivoted around a big uh, like almost movie production type house video right, right? and um, it was for an 11 million dollar listing mm-hmm. and it was it was great and it got shown in the big screen in, in Las Vegas for the yes. luxury RE convention. Yes. And we sold it. I was broker number six. So, you know, it was back when yeah. days on market was like 800 days. Right. Um, and that was that was a huge turning point. So, yeah, we definitely get sellers that want that type of production. Mm-hmm. But then we get sellers that are like, no, I don't want anybody to know about this. I just want you to find me the buyer. Right. Because you know the luxury buyer. So yeah. it, you have to kind of find out what your, what your client wants. Yeah, always. So let's talk about that. Like, how different is a listing presentation for you um, especially at your status now versus maybe somebody coming in who really has to like kind of woo them. Are you still in like, I want to win them over with my marketing and my reach? And if so, like just unpack for us just some of the elements yeah. that you find that many sellers are attracted to when you're saying, here's all the things I'm going to do for you. Yeah, it's interesting because I think a lot of um, sellers at this level just like to hear about how I'm running my business. Mm. Because then they feel like, oh, she's a smart businesswoman. She knows what she's right, doing, right. and she's got all these systems in place yeah. and all these people in place, yes. so that she can deliver a full experience. So it's all about the five star experience. And when I explain to them my method and the way that uh, okay, hold on, I'm putting you on the spot. So tell me how you do it. I'll, I'll be your seller. <laughs> so what is that five star experience, Joy? What do you do? So Tom, I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. Mm-hmm. And I'm really good at negotiating and marketing your house, mm-hmm. but I'm not the person that's going to put together the brochures or do the movie and all mm-hmm. of that. I mm-hmm. have experts in their field who mm-hmm. can do that for you. And so I've surrounded myself with people who are experts in every single aspect of how we're going to market your home mm-hmm. so that we can give you a five-star experience. Are these people that are on your team or do you outsource all this? So some of them are on my team and some of them are outsourced. Got yeah. How many people are on your team? So they're 23. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But seven of them are support. And they mm-hmm. are here to support your listing mm-hmm. um, and to make sure, like, for example, you're never going to find me on the golf course. But some of these other agents, you'll find them on the golf course and they can't pick up their phone if someone wants to show their house. Right. So I make sure that someone's always picking up the phone and is able to answer the questions intelligently about your home. So, you know, our home is, as you've said, when you came in, it's pretty spectacular. Yes. So are you going to handle all the showings? Absolutely. Yes. I love to be there because if there's any type of objection whatsoever, mm-hmm. I want to be able to come back at, at a suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. Thank yeah. you. Good. That was really good. Like, I know you've done it. <laughs> yeah, how many, hey, <laughs> we need to tell them how many listing appointments did you go on last year compared to the year prior? Oh, because you challenged me? Yes. <laughs> You heard here first, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're going to talk about that because that's all about accountability. Tell, but yes, tell them the story. It was, yeah. So I, I saw Tom or I, I don't know. You're, you're like, I want you to get 100 listings this year. Yes. And I was like, you're crazy. There are only 600 homes that were sold in the right. town of Greenwich right. that, the year before. I was like, there's right. no way I'm going to get 100 listings. So I had to text you every day and yep. say zero out of 100, zero out of 100 until I got that first yep. listing presentation. So, so for um, context, it was 100 listings appointments appointments yes, yes. you said listening they're like oh my gosh you can do a six of the market <laughs> right but, but why do you think i was trying to challenge you in that way and and what did you learn from that and maybe share with the person listening right now who's also working in the high end and they're like a hundred appointments that's insane yeah what do you say I, I think it's all about um you know going out there on a consistent basis and i mm-hmm. think that's really 
honestly, that's what coaching is all about, right? It's all, you know, there are all these great ideas and you put so much out there in the universe, on the internet, that right. people can suck up all that information. But it's one thing to suck it up and have it in your head, but it's another thing to actually do it. Right. So if you have someone that you have to report to on a daily basis and his name is Tom Ferry, yes. <laughs> yes. you better damn well do it. So, yes. yeah. Yes. So where did you finish that year? How many, so give him context, how many appointments did you go on the year before? And what'd you do that year? So, you know, I'm not good with numbers. <laughs> But I, I think Don't I never did. say that to your sellers, but yes. Uh, I, I yeah, but I, I think I did like 25 the year prior, mm -hmm. and I did um, about 60 that, that year. More yeah. than doubled. And yeah. by the way, that's in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. When you're when you're not doing listing appointments on, in the regular right. sort of classic sense. Yes. Um, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. So, so you had a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. You pivoted a bunch. If we were to put a bow on this, and you could you could say to every agent around the world that wants to be better in the high end, yeah. what are the two most important things in your mind that either you've said and you want to reiterate or something entirely different? Yeah, so one is is not to be afraid. There's really, mm -hmm. I mean, people are people. So yeah. don't don't think that it's, oh, it's a high end, you know? Mm -hmm. So just make that connection and to be genuine. Three, you said two, mm -hmm. uh, is is just knowing, knowing, get knowledge, get as yeah. much knowledge as possible. So right. people want to work with a market expert, and they want it, you to provide massive value. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So spending time every day looking at the MLS, talking to other brokers, meeting all the architects, knowing all the builders, yeah, needs to be on everybody's radar. It does. It does. And I think that goes for anyone that wants to grow, right? You right. have to try to learn and, and just grow so that you, you become better every every day. Right. Yeah. So uh, so last year, $4.9 in GCI. Yeah. What's your goal for this year? Uh, six. Six million. Yeah. yeah. That's a big number. I know. That's rarefied <laughs> air. So tell us one thing you know you have to do differently in order to make, you know, the whole adding strategy. What do you have to do differently? Yeah, so we're, we're, I mean, we're adding all the time. So mm -hmm. we're adding um, every day, whether it be people, whether it be our skills. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing, I don't know. What's the challenge, Tom? Oh, <laughs> hashtag 200 appointments. I, I would argue, you know, when I look at someone like yourself yeah. or John Grauman or Christoph Chu and you know, all these amazing people that we all know, um, Timmy Smith, yeah. who, you know, set it a goal to go on like 300 listing appointments and he failed miserably and only got to like 225. Oh, okay. And had his second best year in his career. Yeah, I saw that. So I would argue it's the same thing for you. Like you are so good at what you do. We just need you to have more at-bats. Right. You need to shoot the ball more, right? That's true. Activate your competitive side. Yeah. So should we make a bet okay. right here live on the show? I would love that because I know it will it will, it will will catapult me to the next level. I got 10,000 bucks says you can't schedule and go on 150 listing appointments in the next 12 months. Okay. You got it. Oh, <laughs> done. All right. So, Joy, if they want to follow you, where are the best ways for them to connect with you? Yeah. If they got a question about... You, business, luxury, Connecticut, where yeah, do they find Joy you? Joy Kim Metallius, Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, the Metallius team, we had to change it from yep. Metallius Group. Um, I'm at Houlihan Lawrence, which yep. is, you know, another thing about luxury is to connect yourself with who does luxury in right. your town. Right, so, right. Yeah. Not nationally, but in your in town. In your town, yes. correct, yeah. yes. All right, well, yeah. listen, reach out to her. Thank you so much for watching. Drop in some comments. Let us know what you think. We have a lot more of these interviews coming. Joy, you are a joy. Aww, thank you. All right. <laughs>